What's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you an app that I knocked out almost in like two and a half days and it's an AI brand research assistant software, I guess you could say. And before I even get any further, if any of you want to be a part of this project to take over what I've built so far, hit me up via XDM. I'll link it here in the description. So I'm going to show you my process and kind of how I tackled this from start to finish. And this is just my process. It doesn't have to be yours. I'm going to walk you through uh, the steps that I took and I used cursor and I'm going to show you exactly what I did. So the first thing that I like to do is figure out a name. I know it's, it, you don't have to do that. You don't have to have a name to start, but that's what I like to do. So I came up with a name visually. That's the actual name visually. And I want to show you how I first constructed the logo. Yes, I'm a designer. I, I spent a lot of time doing identity design. I like doing the logo stuff first. You'll see what I mean. So here I am in Adobe Illustrator and I'm showing you how I arrived at the name. This isn't the logo obviously, but this is how I personally arrived at the name. So your visual ally, visual ally, visually. Okay, so you can see it's kind of like a play on combining two words, visual ally, visually. I like it. Okay, so next up comes, how am I gonna construct a word mark out of this? I want a word mark based logo, which means just a logo that is based around the type, the name, not like an external symbol. So you'll see a couple failed attempts at concepts, but when you're att attempting logo design, identity design in general, uh, initially you're just trying to come up with whatever hits your, your brain first, and it could be trash. And these kind of are. And then I'll show you what I finally arrived at. And there's also a logo reconstruction video I did in Jitter that I want to show you as well. So here's the first concept. I wanted to kind of figure out a way where we could take ally and reinforce that idea in an abstract manner through the type. So I thought maybe we could twist the L's together, like there's some type of relationship. Well, the problem with that is it looks like an X and also looks like one of those DNA strands. Not good, but I wanted to do it real quick. Next up, I was like, okay, well, what if we capitalize everything and we have the L's kind of in a document format, but then it kind of looks like, I don't know, kind of like beta, like two dudes sitting on top of each other. It's kind of weird. I don't know. I didn't like this. <laughs> it's one of those throwaway concepts. I wouldn't show an identity design client this. It's just me just vomiting stuff from, our, from my brain until eventually I come up with something I do like, which was the next concept. And so here is this concept. This isn't the actual logo. This is me kind of like, okay, maybe we could take a perfect circle, integrate it into the left side or right side of the V and the left side of the L because you know, they're symmetrical and create you know, a symbolic full circle relationship. I like that idea. So if you come down here, kind of expand it on it. It's like, oh, okay, that's nice. Typically I don't like arc logos, but this one has a lot of symbolism behind the name because we are literally connecting visual with ally. And it's done so kind of like in a nice symmetrical format. Um, over here, the only difference between these two concepts here is just there's less white space between the L's. I like this one more simply because you can tell that these are L's a little bit more so. So then I was like, okay, we'll kind of uh, do a little visual demonstration of the concepts that I talked about. So your visual ally, blah, blah, blah. Down here, I, you can see that I, I noticed that these, these lines will eventually intersect with each other. So it's to represent unity, intersection, and ally, whatever. Um, additionally, right here, full circle. And then I thought to myself, wait a second, the right side of the Y and the left side of the V why can't those be based on perfect circles as well? And so this is the final iteration of the logo. So my idea is to take kind of like a Venn diagram. Let me get this out of here. I visual ally in the middle, they come together as visually. I like that. <laughs> so what does the logo look like with the Y and the V adjusted right here? All right. As you can see, it's following the perfect circle shape as well as here. And then finally, this is the logo. I like it. Um, it's a good word mark. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're just, you know, we're trying to create an MVP. But again, because I love identity design, I knocked the logo out, I have the name. Uh, the website address is visual, visually.digital. All right. 
So now I'm gonna show you the logo reconstruction video that I created in Jitter.video. Jitter.video is an awesome uh, web-based animation tool that makes it super easy to create really cool animations like this. Eventually I'm gonna add uh, you know, music to this and also I just improve it overall because I, I knocked this out like within 90 minutes last night. Um, I'm going to make it much cooler and it's going to be a portfolio project for my upcoming design service where I tackle identity and UI UX. So now that I have the logo and the identity kind of done and fleshed out, uh, the next step was to hop inside of Figma. So in Figma, I wanted to create wireframes. So yes, this here is a wireframe, don't judge me. The reason I wanted to create wireframes first before pr proceeding to cursor is so that I can guide cursor on the layout visually instead of just trying to tell it what to do. Um, this is this, the general scaffolding that I imagine. Of course, the end result would be far you know, better than what you see here. So it's just the nuts and bolts. So the idea is to, for them to describe their business in prompt format. Uh, once I hit start research, then I thought to myself, well, because a lot of tooling is going to happen and a lot of requests are going to occur, I, we can't just make this open to the public. Uh, we need to at least get in a free email account. That way, you know, it's not going to cost me a dollar or two, you know, every time somebody tries to create, you know, do a search, like a competitive research. Because... Here's the thing, I didn't even mention this at the beginning of the video. It is super important when you're a brand identity designer or you're, you know, even a UI UX designer who's tasked with also handling the brand that you do research. That's the whole purpose of the tool. You do research based on the competition and this purpose of this tool is to help you knock that research out. So if they're not logged in, they need to log in or create an account. Super simple. Now, once they do that, then it's gonna, forward over to a collecting and analyzing results page. Again, wireframe, this looks like crap, I know. And then once it's done with that, it's going to lead to a dashboard of some sort with a secondary navigation. Um, this brand guidance page would probably be the most important, but I decided not to flesh out those details just yet. But important to inform you know, the, uh, the AI in cursor that this is gonna be the starting page where we kind of create a comprehensive analysis of all competitors examined and kind of put it into an AI generated report slash suggestions for the brand identity designer to handle stuff like topography, you know, insights about colors and all that stuff. So then I created a kind of like a, a UI for each of these categories, logos, colors, topography, screenshots, socials, reviews, and pricing. Um, this is all stuff that you would want to know before tackling an identity for a given business, whether that's your own or for client. So right here, this would just kind of list out all the logos associated with the brands and the competition that they found. And then here's the colors. It's auto it would automatically extract the colors, which would require um, automatically extracting screenshots and all that stuff. Um, additionally, out here, here's the topography. It would list out all of the fonts that are found and commonly used on those websites and apps. Then we have screenshots, kind of an ugly section. Obviously, there would be more screenshots per result, but I'm just showing one here. Uh, additionally, we have socials. So this one is tricky. You'll see in the actual MVP that I created, um, it's difficult to extract followers and posts and stuff. You're gonna have to, I would have to rely on an, a third-party API of some sort, you'll see. Um, additionally, over here, we have reviews. So pulling from Google, Yelp, Trustpy, but also Google Play Store, as well as the App Store and iOS. And then also pricing. So we'd have some type of a pricing structure um, based on each result. So that is a series of screenshots and mock-up wireframes that I would then be able to reference and feed into cursor and paste into cursor for each prompt when I tell it to tackle these pages. You'll see it didn't do the perf most perfect job, but it got pretty close most of the time. So after that, I basically went into Google Docs and in Google Docs, I kind of just described the idea um, that I imagined. So it would be basically the starter prompt. So I'm not gonna read through all this. It kind of just lists out the features that I imagine. And then also it would kind of describe the flow that's occurring in the mockups as well. All right, so at that point is when I actually go into cursor and we start building out the thing. 
Um, there's two primary, or maybe just one primary um, MCP that I'm using, and that is the Supabase MP MCP. Um, so this, this app is based on Next.js. It's using Supabase, it's using uh, Google Auth, and a few other things. So now I'm gonna show you what it actually created. So let me get to go local host. And here is the starter. So obviously a big ugly button, a big weird UI. The first thing um, that, that you know I had to do is the, uh, the login page. So sign in with Google here. I'm signing in, continue. There we go. So here it is. So enter uh, a description of your client's business or your business, whatever. Um, I'm just gonna say something like I'm running, wait, long distance running tracker app, whatever. That's a really weak description, but I'm gonna hit start research anyhow. This page, I didn't feed it the mockup, I forgot. So it created its own mockup for me, our UI. And as you can see, it's actually pretty solid because uh, I didn't guide it at all here. Um, this stuff that where it says 100%, that's hard coded. It's not actually tied to what's happening in the background, um, but it is using OpenAI to find the competitors. It's extracting logos. It's extracting uh, the various screenshots, the colors. It's not perfect. You're gonna see in a second, but this typically takes like 30 seconds uh, for it to go through and find all of these. So I'm gonna let it sit here. All right, so it says seven competitors analyzed. You can see this is all screwed up. Again, I'm not really super anal about the UI at all at this point. In fact, the final thing will probably be drastically different than this. So brand guidance page, again, I didn't have that um, in, in any of the mockups, so it's just very bare. But let's go ahead and check out what it actually did. This is all real data. All right, so strava.com, RunKeeper. RunKeeper is actually what I use. Um, and I've used it for like 12 years for my runs. Um, and so it did a good job of, you know, basically getting all the apps uh, that are in this space. Now for some of them, I'm gonna have to refine it to, to get even more targeted results because if you have a really niche idea, it's hard for it to come up with direct competitors. So that's one area that's gonna have to be improved. Um, next up, colors. All right, so how is it getting the actual color schemes from each of these? Well, what it's doing is it's getting, it's extracting the color data from the screenshots page. So you can see in Strava, here is the screenshots page. Unfortunately, it has this stupid little cookie thing that shows up. That's one issue that, that occurs, but it is just extracting anything or the most common colors found from the screenshot. That's not necessarily the brand identity colors. So that's gonna have to be thought of as well. Um, as you can see in the screenshots, here's another GDPR pop-up. These are the stupidest things ever. <sighs> Never mind that, um, but you can see it did a, pr a great job of just you know capturing the screenshots and going back to the colors page. That's what it's doing. So it's like okay, at Strava. All right, so if we look at the Strava or Strava or however you pronounce that, these are the colors it's mentioning, but that's not the actual brand colors. It's not even mentioning this primary color in the logo. Again, it would have to be fixed and adjusted, which could be done um, through you know different prompts. So this actually did a pretty good job here. Next up is topography. This part, it fails. And I have to go back and try to fix this. Or if somebody comes on board, hit me up. Um, we'll have to fix this because it's not really accurately getting all the fonts. It's telling me enter is almost in every single one of these. So it might be hallucinating some results. But again, I'm, I'm confident that this, this could be fixed. It's not that huge of a deal. Um, again, here's a screenshot section. Did a good job. It got all of them. Um, and then additionally, socials. Here is one of the tricky parts. When it comes to web scraping in general, and especially with social media networks, you can't rely on web scraping. It won't work. So that's why it says NA for followers, um, NA for posts on every single one, essentially. Some of them, it won't even find the socials like this Nike Run Club. But again, these are all things that are fixable if I had more time to, to dedicate on this area alone. Um, so what I would have to do is rely on a third party API like Rapid API or API-fi.com um, in order to more accurately get this information. Now, of course, that means it's gonna cost something. So important to note. Um, reviews, same 
concept. It's only getting app store reviews right now because most of these are just apps. Um, but again, it's not grabbing the amount of reviews or the type of reviews, but you know, as with socials and reviews, these are all, it's tackling all this. So the YouTube channel, it was able to find the YouTube channel associated with uh, all these, these companies. Um, here's the Instagram of something called Endo Mondo or something. Yep, it all works. Very handy to have if you are typically tackling this stuff manually when it comes to brand research. Um, and then a pricing page I don't have yet complete. So I was able to knock that out with an identity design, the concept, um, and almost, you know, kind of like 50% way of an MVP in like two and a half days with cursor. Simply awesome. So I wanted to share that with you all. Um, I'm not really, I don't really care about, you know, building in public and, you know, oh, somebody's going to steal the idea. Why? Because anybody's going to be able to knock these, these projects out pretty quickly. But the one differentiating factor is going to be implementation, UI, and UX. And I pride myself on being pretty good. And if anybody else wants to try to tackle in this and see who can do a better UI, go ahead, take a stab at it. But if you want to be a part of this project, work directly with me on this project and maybe future projects, I'm definitely looking for somebody who would be interested in taking on the development role so I can focus on the design stuff. So hit me up via XDM if you're interested and show me some of your work. All right, I will see you all soon. Goodbye.